Hello, Tim Gilberg here, Next Level Guitar. We got beginner vocal lesson number. Had a lot of good feedback. A lot of people enjoyed the uh, first basic warm up, which was called a lip roll. Some people could do it, some people could not. Uh, you got to work, can't really help you with that uh, in person. So you're on your own on that. A lot of the vocal terms when I first started, the teachers would throw these terms at you and you're trying to learn these scales and do all this other stuff and it's overwhelming. So I'm going to go through some of the terms, hopefully break it down in an understandable format so you can understand when people are saying you need to bring your chest voice up or your mix or your middle or you got your falsetto, your head, all that. We're going to go over that and break that down too. So get ready to rock and roll. And some viewers wanted to know why? They would have to do vocal warm-ups or lip rolls or scales. Why can't they just sing? Let me relate one thing that I found. I had some good coaches when I was younger for sports and athletics, but this is applied to other things I've done in life. When I was younger, I was a speed skater. I was actually from Wisconsin, even though I uh, live in California now. And uh, when I was in middle school, I started speed skating and I wanted to get better. And the coach, I said, what do I got to do to get better? What do I got to do? I want to win these races. And he'd say things that had nothing to do with speed skating. Running up hills, riding your bike 10 or 20 miles a day, using weights. All those things would strengthen your body, just like these vocal scales. You, don't, you could just sing, but if you want to get better, if you want to have better tone, if you want to increase your stamina, if you want to... Uh, you, you hold longer notes, reach higher highs, and things like that. You need to do follow a method. You want to improve your vocal performance and your stamina and ability. Is you'll perform, you'll do vocal warm ups, vocal scales. Those are the building blocks. Those are the foundation to get your voice to the next level. And they do work. It it's amazing. Amazing, incredible. So let's get started with some vocal terms. When I first started, the teachers, they threw out all these terms at you that, you know, it just was overwhelming at times. You'd hear, well, there's your chest voice and you have your head voice and your falsetto and then you have a mix or a middle. There are to terms, terms uh, all having to do with vocal. And so let's go through now a couple of the, the main terms. I'm going to break them down into how I see them. So hopefully that'll relate to you because I'm not a 20 year expert on this. I started about a year and a half ago, but I, but I was able to find some great teachers who teach one of the best methods on the market today. The first thing you should know is, <clears throat> you'll hear people mention the chest voice. Put your hand on your chest and say, uh, you'll hear it vibrate, okay? This is your speaking voice. And if you put your hand right where I've got it here and just go, ah. Uh, you can feel it vibrates right there, okay? Your head voice, here's an example of your head voice. Ah, okay, the falsetto, see there's still an edge. If there's still your vocal cords are pressing in, you still, it's not just an airy. If you think of uh, like the Bee Gees, um, they, the lead singer Barry Gibb, he uses falsetto where it's just airy. Also, go to YouTube or uh, go to, Prince has a video or a song called Kiss, and it's that's falsetto. It's it's real light and airy, and the vocal cords are not being pressed in on that. So that just gives you a, a real general idea to start. Chest voice is speaking voice is where you talk. Head voice is a whole another range, and then the falsetto is that that mid really light. You don't have any pressure. It's you don't have any power, much tone. It's just a real light. Uh, most songs are never in that. And one of the key things with this method that I've learned is to take your chest voice and it mixes with your head voice, but not in a falsetto, and it increases your range. And that's what these exercises do. That's the whole thing. It's a lot of times what you'll do is people who are real chesty, they'll they'll try to pull it up and their voice gets meaning, they'll try to hit the higher notes, but they're not blending with the, the head voice. So that's what these exercises do for you. They allow you to use less air and use a combination of your head voice and your chest voice 
to reach these higher notes than you would normally reach with more power than a falsetto is you can't really sing a hard rock song in falsetto it would sound ridiculous but if you're able to take your chest voice and pull it up and use a third of your vocal cords instead of all of them and then press in you can have a real hard emotional sound okay the spot between the it's kind of like the no man's land everybody has it in different spots it's called the break and like it sounds uh, you can uh, people will run if you're constantly breaking and it's cracking and one of the key things of this the vocal training and using these scales is allow you to go from your chest to your middle to your head voice without a break where you don't have that clonk where you're uh uh ah uh, ah uh, uh, where there's a big noticeable if, when you get it down you can just go ah uh, uh, just smoothly up and down and that takes work and but you can do it with the scales the vocal scales the piano scales you sing along with there's various techniques and balls we'll get into all that also we had some comments where people uh, were saying, well, you took five minutes and you just did the, the lip roll. Well, I'm trying to explain the fundamentals behind this, okay? I'm not going to say, do lip rolls, do piano scales, do this. You're, there you go. There's a 30-second video for you. I'm trying to give you the foundation and the background so you can understand why you need to do this, why, how your vocal cords work, and how the whole thing goes together. So hopefully that makes sense. I, do, I don't mind the feedback. We get good and bad. And if it's constructive, I'll definitely try to address that.